Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon for some of you. Uh, welcome, and thank you for joining us for our monthly Squirrel webinar. In today's webinar, we will be covering how to integrate third-party food delivery services with Squirrel version 11. My name is Megan Funk. I'm on the customer success team here at Squirrel Systems, and I will be one of your hosts today. Presenting today's webinar is Patrick Paris, Sales and Systems Engineer. And today we also have Cyrus Sai, our Senior Product Marketing Manager, who will be joining me as co-host. We hope you find this session informative and useful while we all navigate these challenging times to our industry. In this webinar, we hope to educate you on integrating third-party delivery services into your food and beverage operation. Before we kick things off, there are a few housekeeping items to go over. Today's webinar is scheduled to last about 30 minutes with a Q&A session at the end. All attendees will be muted during the presentation. If you have a question at any time, please post in the questions tab and Cyrus will be addressing them at the end. This webinar will be recorded and published for viewing. We will share those details in a communication afterwards. At the end of the presentation, we will have a post webinar survey. Uh, we truly value our customer feedback and would appreciate you all taking the time to provide your thoughts and comments on today's presentation. Okay, so today's webinar will be presented by Patrick Paris, one of our senior sales and systems engineers. Patrick has been with Squirrel for over 20 years and has worked with all manner of customers from large casino operations to multi-unit chains to single unit owner operators. His, uh, his knowledge and expertise will be shown here today as he goes over the contents of this webinar. With that said, uh, Patrick, I will pass the session over to you. Okay, thanks, Megan. Appreciate it quite a bit. And uh, good day, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're excited that you took a little bit of time out of your day today to uh, join us and go over some of these things. We've really worked quite a bit lately over about this whole third-party delivery piece, and uh, we get a lot of questions about it. It's such a, it's becoming such an integrated part of what we do today. So, depending on where you are in the world, um, this is this exists in different areas. Some places. Um, this is adding a separate revenue line. Um, people are seeing that the value that it comes, we're flowing extra dollars through the business, um, and that's a good thing. Other people, this is their lifeline. Um, there are parts of the country, parts of Canada, that are still in heavy lockdown. People aren't able to go out, um, but they are still looking to get their favorite dishes. They are still looking to not have to cook at home every day, and this really kind of becomes their lifeline. Um, there's a lot of points to third-party delivery, uh, there's a lot of upside. There's also some challenges to kind of figure out and figure out what works best uh, within your environment and how it's going to work. Um, everything from integration to standalone to also managing the different fees and the different pieces that come along. Uh, within third-party delivery, right, they are there to make money, um, just like they are for, with, for like we are for our customers, and they're providing a service. Um, so you can see anywhere from 20 to 30 percent um, increases for fees. Um, one of the other pieces that we run into with these guys is, as a rule, if they are your direct contact, you don't have direct contact to your customers. Um, it goes through them. So they are maintaining that loyalty where you're becoming more of just a service provider. Um, and then there can also be some chaos. What we're seeing for the people that are signing up directly for the services that are not getting the integration um, you have a failure point within your business um, with this third-party delivery piece, and that is typically some type of an iPad where the orders come in, it's got the basic information and some control points that we're going to talk about a little bit later. So what we want to do today is talk to you about how Squirrel Systems version 11, specifically 11.7 and up, um, can help you manage this, restore order within your system, and make sure that everything is flowing very um, smoothly within your operation to provide the best service uh, to the people that are out there. We're going to touch base today talking about integrations and how we get to Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Skip the Dishes, um, and some other ones. Because what we're finding is where there are, the, where there are the big players in the market, um, regionally, uh, based in provinces, there's other groups that are out there that are very prominent. Uh, they may not be nationally known, but they're very important. 
um, and we want to talk about how we can meet our customers where they are. Okay. So one of the questions that we're always asked is can delivery, uh, specifically third party delivery, be profitable? Um, and it can be, but it takes a little bit of work um, figuring out exactly how you want to do it. Um, and where that profitability comes in is how are you going to price it and how are you going to manage it, right? Because you've got extra cycles uh, from an employee standpoint or a local standpoint of managing what's pushed up online, what you're charging for it, and then ultimately also looking at what is the ultimate cost of this item, uh, right? Because there's going to be service fees, there's going to be delivery fees. Um, now we're starting to see origination charges and different things as Different regions put caps on what they're allowed to do for service charges. Like any group, they're good at figuring out a way around it. So one of the things that you have to think about when you're putting these items online is ultimately what is the cost? Um, and there's a lot of examples out there. The one I want to give today is my wife is a big fan at breakfast of avocado toast. Uh, vegetarian, it's just something she likes, she considers it a treat. So I decided I was going to order it for her one day and surprise her with it in the place we go. I'm familiar with the owner, he and I are friends. Um, and it's normally $14. Um, so I ordered it, sent it to her with all the fees, all the delivery stuff to get it sent to her at work. Um, it ended up costing me, I think it was about $20.37. Now, I normally go there with her, and it's $14. Um, so it kind of got my mind turning about what people are willing to pay, what are they going to absorb for this service and the different pieces. And I got to talking to the owner, and I said, hey, I'm curious, this is what I paid, where is it on your side? Well, for him, for people to come in the door and get it, he gets $14. Um, based on still charging that same price after the fees, because there's fees on both sides, right? There's fees for uh, the restaurant, there's fees for the end user who's actually ordering. He actually gets just under $12. So for him, the items that actually go up on the site um, that he's actually using for delivery, he's got to pay very close attention to the food costs. Um, his cost of the other pieces and all of that. So he makes sure that he's not dropping below a profitability level. So a lot of people are looking at, do I just raise prices across the board? Well, that depends on how much you're willing to put on the website, what you want to offer for delivery. Most places really try to take a look at their menu and figure out which items are going, are going to hold up best in delivery. Um, you know, if you're a site that does some type of fajita, um, is that going to travel well versus tacos versus whatever it may be? Um, so figuring out those specifics are very important. Um, explore different models is very important. So online ordering um, versus DoorDash versus your own website so that you can actually control some of the, the flow through takeout um, and not just delivery, all very, very important. Um, and how can a restaurant manage the cost and maintain the profitability? That's really the important side, the cost of the item, and then the profitability also wraps up into how much time are you spending managing the system and getting those price changes um, up to the provider, managing the items that are actually going up, and that piece, okay? So what we want to talk about is integrating third-party delivery to make it easy. And this is where Squirrel really excels. Um, those of you that use Squirrel, you know we don't look at just one way to do things. And it's really kind of a philosophy that we take with everything because we know we need to meet people where they are and it's not a one size fits all environment nowadays. So we've got a couple of different paths for you. So if you want to get into delivery, uh, but you also want a web presence and you want to be able to draw people in for carryout, um, we have a path for that. So if you're looking at using Xsign, Tacit or Olo, uh, those are online ordering groups. Um, they have built in rails to get you to uh, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Skip the Dishes. Depending on where you are, uh, those tend to play bigger uh, parts in the market. Um, and that's really kind of the nice part about it is because if you've already got that web presence, now we're just actually adding on a little bit to it um, and letting you now go, now I'm going to do third-party delivery. With your existing website that's branded for you, there's a link, and we'll show you an example of this in just a little bit, um, of that link to delivery, which essentially then transitions you to another website it looks seamless, um, but essentially now you're going up to the DoorDash to skip the dishes to their website, placing the order and kind of running from there. Um, that does still transition into the point of sale. So it's coming through our system, through our APIs and coming directly into the point of sale. There is no person that has to get the order off of an iPad 
um, or some type of a tablet and then manually input it so that we eliminate that uh, point of failure to where somebody could ring in the wrong item, get a modifier wrong, or something like that. The next piece that we offer, okay, um, is kind of a direct integration. And we do this through Chally. Um, and this one's kind of fun because it gives us a much wider scope. If you're not familiar with Chally, they are a middleware um, that is letting uh, different groups uh, funnel into one pipe, right? So if you go with Chally, um, depending on what market you're looking for, what model you're really chasing after, um, it gives you the ability to go, hey, I want to start with Uber Eats, but maybe a little bit later I want to go to uh, Postmates or I want to go to uh, DoorDash. And those can all come into the same place. And how that works is Chally becomes essentially um, a service that's going to stati stati or standardize or normalize the order. So regardless of which pipe it comes in from, Chally is going to grab it, normalize it, and then it's going to push it down to our web service, which is up in the cloud, and then it's going to push it to the individual property for that order to be placed, just like the order is being placed in the restaurant by one of your employees at the terminal. So when you're looking at the different paths to go, if you're not really looking for carry out, um, this is a great option for you. And again, it lets you scale uh, based on you want. Some people, one uh, third-party delivery group is great. It's the big player in the market, and that's what everybody uses. Other places, it's a little bit more of a mixed bag, and you may want two or three um, to get the revenue flow through that you're really looking for for your business. So it, both are really good options. Um, again, Chally is going to give you the ability to bolt more on top. Um, and you'll typically see them add more uh, third-party groups uh, a little bit quicker. So if you do want to grab this new startup that's in your area, uh, they're a great way to do it. And then all you have to do is deal with them. Everything else is already in place because they're going to normalize the order and use the same pipes into the squirrel system to make it very easy. Okay. So essentially, you're looking at a couple of things, and we touched on this previously. Um, going through an online ordering platform like X9 or Tacit, you get kind of the big three, right? They're going to go to the big players. So you get DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Skip the Dishes. With a direct to the point of sale model going through Chally, uh, this is where you're going to get all of the other ones, right? So you get the same, the big ones, but you've also got Postmates, uh, Waiter, and then you can get um, Joy Up or all of the different ones that you see. And that list continues to grow. And it's one of the reasons that we partnered with Chally because it really did allow us to get our customers a solution uh, that allow, uh, lets you uh, use what you think is best for your market and your particular marketplace, okay? So the online ordering piece is a little bit different for everybody, and we're showing you a couple of examples here over the next couple of minutes. One is O'Charlie's. Uh, if you're down in the States and you're familiar with them, uh, they are a huge multi-unit group. They've got restaurants all over the States. Um, and they recently underwent a huge digital transformation. Um, they were tying everything in together in a central location. So they wanted web-based ordering with the ability to push out to um, a DoorDash or an Uber Eats, but also including in that their, particularly, their particular system and their loyalty model. So being able to meet a customer where they are, let them either order off their direct website for pickup, allowing them to maintain that relationship, but if their preference is to go to a DoorDash or something like that, they have that same thing. And it's all one stop. So within their website, I go and I click take out. It's going to take me to their website. If I click delivery, it looks seamless. And the menus are very similar. And the look is very similar. And the fill is very similar. But it's technically popping you directly to DoorDash. So you can put your information in um, and then have your order delivered. Go ahead and go to the next one. Okay. So just an example of what their delivery one looks like. So if you go out. You pick delivery, um, and it's going to pop up and ask you, which one do you want to go with? The, here's based on your area, what you're looking for, and the number of different stores that you can choose from. Go ahead and go to the next one. This is just an example of how they build the databases, right? It's a little bit different than being on-site with your menu, so you got to have your pictures, a little bit of a description, the price, and then you get your order over to the right-hand side so you can see what you're ordering, how much it's going to be, and then either continue to order, Okay. So here going from appetizers to an entree with uh, essentially the, the Bayou salmon, adding those to the order and getting your overall total. So it really gives you good flexibility to showcase your menu, let people order the things that you know that they prefer. O'Charlie's has a lot of signature items uh, that people just really, really love. And then 
within that and on their websites, they have the ability to let you look at tabs of signature items or favorites and different pieces like that. Okay. Uh, this is an example of Cactus Club. They're one of our customers up in Canada, and they are very robust. They are power users within the Squirrel system, and they're really leveraging the system to let them do what we talked about earlier. One, I can do order pickup. That's going to allow me to maintain my relationship, the information with the customer, going through their own branded website, whether it's self-hosted or, again, through an Olo, a Tacit, or uh, an X9. But then they also have Get Delivery, and you can see right there they're specifying this is DoorDash, and when I'm going to order this and I click on it, it's going to take me to DoorDash. It's going to take me to their menu on the DoorDash side, and then I can place my order, have it do all of its pieces, do the relevant fees, do my payment, and continue on. Okay? So this is just an example of their menu, and this is kind of where it gets really fun, where entrepreneurs and restaurateurs can take the pictures that they like the most of their of their items, they can give it a great description. A lot of people really take this very seriously and they make it this just kind of larger than life description of the item so that they can see what it is. And the websites can be very robust. Okay. So the question that we always get is exactly how does the third party delivery integration work? Okay. So essentially what we're doing with the integration is we're trying to minimize the challenges, right? Um, the challenges with just going direct to third party and not having it integrated to the system um, is that one, the manual entry of orders. They're coming in on some type of a tablet, and then you have to have an employee that's paying attention, places that order, and make sure that they order it exactly the way that it's coming through. Um, each digital ordering channel, so DoorDash versus Skip the Dishes versus whatever it may be, um, is going to have a different channel, and they're going to require separate menus. Right. So then if I need to update a price, I've got to update it. If you're using multiple groups, then I've got to update it in multiple locations. Um, also, how do I deal with out of stock items? Right. And that's where this tablet comes in if it's not integrated and in what you have to do. So you're on that tablet all the time. A lot of times people tell us it takes almost an employee dedicated to it to maintain it if you're getting a lot of reps within the system. OK. So within the point of sale and with the integration to Squirrel, we're going to help you take care of a lot of that information. And I've got a flow chart um, that I'm going to show you here in just a couple of minutes. But essentially with the integration, you're going to order off the third-party delivery of your choice, whichever one you're teamed up with, and that can be a multitude of them. They're going to push the order um, down to Chally, which is then going to send it to our cloud-based server that is managing those orders and then after they've been normalized by Chally, they get pushed down to the site level um, through our APIs and our services to have that order automatically placed just like somebody was standing um, in the business. What this allows us to do, again, is I don't have to pay attention to that tablet. I can focus on my business as normal, um, and I only have to touch that tablet during a couple of very particular scenarios, which we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes. Okay. So essentially, for those that are interested in the technical side of this, this is kind of how everything breaks out. So once I place my order through my given delivery provider, it's going to come directly over to Chally. Chally is going to normalize that order to a standard format, um, and then it's actually going to push it down um, to our cloud service that is managing that piece, which is then going to shove it off to through the agents to the exist to the store locations that actually need to have the orders dropped into the system. Once it's dropped into the system, it's going to be placed like a regular order um, as if somebody was standing in a terminal and placing it right there within your business. So I don't have to pay attention to the tablet. I don't have to maintain anything like that. I can just work the way that I normally work. Um, the other thing that the system is going to allow us to do, and this is kind of where it gets fun, is if I need to make price changes, I can just go ahead and make those in the system like I do now, whether that's the back office, whether that's at the terminal level, I can make that change. The system is designed right now to update prices every 12 hours. So with the automation that Squirrel offers you, we can really help you manage that so you can very easily take care of it. Here's the scenario that I'll give you with that. If we automate your system to start up automatically every day, which we do for the majority of our customers, let's say we do 4 a.m., um, the system will start and it will automatically update any price changes or anything like that at that start business day. 
Um, then 12 hours later, so 4 p.m. prior to the business uh, or prior to the dinner shift, it will also do an update and it will push those across. So if I know I need to raise my price on a particular item uh, because now I'm paying more for romaine or I'm paying more for beef and I want to make that change, I can just make it at the terminal level at the point of sale. It'll go back to the database and at 4 p.m., that 12 hour window, it will automatically upload that, push it to Chally, which will then push it out to your third party provider and update those prices. It takes just a matter of seconds for those updates to go back, which is fantastic. So having that two way communication to where they talk to Chally, Chally talks to us, we talk to Chally, and then it populates it back, makes it so if you've got the same item that's running on say three platforms, um, you update it just in your point of sale and everything will happen for you automatically in the background. It makes it very easy. Um, and again, it keeps you in your normal rhythm in the store, makes it so that you don't have to spend all your time or going every day at two o'clock, I gotta go spend an hour getting ready to update um, and do any changes that I am doing um, for my third party deliveries, okay? Patrick, thanks for that in-depth uh, look at behind the scenes of how our third-party delivery integration works with Chowley. Uh, we're finding a lot of customers um, have been um, getting on board with third-party de delivery and they have a lot of questions about the how the integration service works. So in this segment here, I'm going to pose a few questions that we commonly get from customers and we'll talk through some of those answers. Um, so the first question that we get, Patrick, uh, about the integration is, how do you manage the menu and the pricing? Uh, well, that's kind of the nice part. Uh, through Squirrel Systems, um, it's like you do it normally, right? So within Squirrel, we're going to essentially, with those online items, map to the SQL ID number that's within the Squirrel database. So when you make a change to the item within the system, uh, whether it's a price or a description or anything like that, um, within that 12 hour window, it will automatically update that um, to the other, to the third party delivery people. You also have the, uh, the ability to, if you want to do it right now, if you do a stop and start of the business day or you shut down the host service and restart it, it'll automatically kick that piece off for you um, and get it updated to all of the needed outlets. Great. Thank, thanks, Patrick. Now, here's one of the nice parts about what Squirrel's doing, and we're developing this. For, for our end users that are using older versions, say 9, 10, um, that are trying to get them things done, we want to make sure that we can help support you. Um, and we have built a application outside of Squirrel that lets us manage that, but it's, it's a little bit, uh, it's just a little bit more challenging because, again, it's another touch point. Um, within Squirrel version 11.7, which we're showing you right here, um, which 11.7 is being rolled out. It's being installed in large properties and different groups. Um, we have actually built into it. If you look to the middle of the screen, there's actually a place for me to flag, hey, this is an online item. So not only is it available in the store, but I also want it to be available online. Um, I can flag it right there. That's where I can put in the description. And I can also manage the photos that we want to update. So just by updating it here within Squirrel, which you're touching every day anyways, um, it makes it very easy to have it in the central location so you can have your pictures, you can assign them, and then either at the next start business day or at the next update point, it will push all that data and let it propagate through the different systems, through Chally and to your third-party delivery provider. The next question, Patrick, is how do you handle out-of-stock items? I uh, see, and that's the nice part about being integrated with, if it's not integrated, you have to go to the iPad or, or the tablet that they're providing or that you've got it set up on and go through a rigorous system of pieces um, to do this. Through the typical integration with Squirrel, if I go just to the terminal like I normally do and I inhibit an item and I say it is currently out of stock or I've had it on countdown and now it's out of stock, it will automatically push that back through Chally into your third party delivery. Right now, that service is set to run every five minutes. Um, it's something that we're still evaluating. Um, currently, it's not a per user um, configuration point, but it's something that we're considering. Uh, but we're finding right now that the five minutes seems to work pretty well. So if I go to the terminal and inhibit an item, it's going to, with the, every five minutes, 
it's going to push that information up. And as soon as it goes to Chally and then back to the provider, it's automatically going to remove those items so they can't be ordered, saying that they are currently out of stock. It's a great feature, again, normal business. Uh, we want to focus on we're working to put the hooks in place so you can do what you always do in the restaurant, um, in the hotel, whatever it may be. And then those things are happening for you in the background so you don't have to have another touch point. Let's make sure that we can manage all the systems with the standard processes you're already doing today. This is a question that we get fairly often, Patrick. Uh, do you still need the tablets if you have this direct integration with the third-party delivery services? Absolutely. Um, the tablets are necessary. You don't need them um, quite as much as the photo is showing right here. So you've got multiple different third-party deliveries and every one of them has their own tablet, right? So making that hostess area or wherever you're running out of it very cluttered. Um, you'll always need one if it is not integrated you have to touch it all the time. You have to update your prices, your menus, um, everything through there. If you're integrated with Squirrel, your touch point with those tablets is very minimal. Essentially, you have to go to the tablets for a couple of items. One would be, let's just say that you are getting inundated with orders. Your restaurant's full, you're in an area that has opened up, your restaurant's full, and the orders are just flying. You go to that tablet to tell it to pause, and it won't let them place any more orders, giving you a chance to get caught up. Um, that's the only place that that can be done, uh, and that's for today. We're working with them on options to be able to do different things at the point of sale, again, to make it easier for you guys. Um, the other thing that you would need the tablet for is if there's a problem. Um, if there's something going on with an order, if for some reason you've got to be able to contact the customer, those tablets are how you start that communication to the provider. So DoorDash, Skip the Dishes, and they all have different standards of what they're going to let you do. Some of them, you've got to tell them the information, and then they've got to connect to the customer. Some, they will give you some basic information on a way to contact them, uh, but it's very minimal, and that's that piece where they're really standing there going, this is our customer, right? You're a provider, and they're trying to manage that piece. So that's where you've got to really decide how that works. Um, and order resolution for errors. A lot of the um, restaurants are dealing with issues on their own. They're just trying to make it right. So let's say you ran out of mozzarella sticks and I've got an order for it, um, but I can't fulfill it. The time it would take me to try to go to the tablet, find out how they're going to let me talk to the customer to see what I could do with it is going to delay the order so much they would be agitated. So they might throw a cheesy garlic bread in there um, instead so that they, they just try to take care of it from there and then wait and see if anything comes back or how it gets managed. So you do still need the tablets. But with that integration, those points are so minimal um, that you don't have to, it's not something that has to be at the forefront of your mind and your business as you're seeing in the picture right in front of you. And Patrick, how about this one? How, how do you manage orders to the kitchen when you have all these orders coming in from different 3PD services? Well, so we touched on that just briefly uh, a little bit earlier. Um, you know, when they're coming in, these guys are making their money from volume, right? So they're right now, they're not looking for us to have a way to restrict that. Um, and a lot of them, it's just, it's straight, it comes through. So you need to manage your throughput for your kitchen. You know what they can handle and what they can't. And that's where being able to pause that online ordering piece comes into play. So if you just, hey, we are completely swamped, I cannot do anything else, that's where you go to that tablet and you pause it. And then you have to unpause it later, right? We want to get that back up get that um, uh, revenue flowing again. But we want to make sure that we don't just swamp the kitchen to where it is unmanageable. Uh, one of the things that Squirrel is doing right now is we're working with not only Chally, but these third-party providers to look at some options for throttling, right? To For us to be able to say, hey, between 11 and 11.40, I can take uh, 20 orders every 15 minutes. Um, but between 12 and 1.45, I want to drop that down to five. Um, I want to be able to take those and offer some things. That's something that we're working on. We're hoping to be able to uh, bring some services like that to the market here shortly. It's a uh, constant process working with them because, again, their whole process is volume. But we also are standing out here going, we know the industry. We know the businesses. And we need to have a way that we can control that, specifically during peak volume times. 
um, that's when we want to help manage that so the kitchens do not just become completely overwhelmed. And Patrick, how do you handle um, errors with orders? Well, that's, that's an interesting piece. Um, and early on, we came up with a way that if there were errors and there were things that needed to be dealt with, a way to message the managers so they knew that there was something going on. Um, so far to date, we haven't had anybody use it because it's through SMS and text messages. And the question is, which managers get it? Are they working? We don't want it sent to everybody because they don't want to be bothered with it when they're not working. Um, and that piece. So most managers right now with errors, with things that are unclear, with things that can't be fulfilled, they're really just handling it themselves. They're coming up with some type of a process that will allow them, if not to deliver the exact item, a good substitute item for them um, with some type of descriptor so that they understand what was going on. But with the speed, uh, with the delivery pieces, with the, you know, we're going to get this to you within X number of minutes, um, it really becomes a, we just have to keep moving. And it's right now the contacting the provider to get to the customer um, is so challenging. Most of the managers are just dealing with any order errors or anything like that internally and moving on. And Patrick, could you just say a few words about third-party uh, delivery reporting, getting reports and data out of the uh, the services? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the interesting part about this and, you know, where Chally really comes in um, to play a really good role is if you're using multiple third party providers, you really want a central location um, to go back and look. Right. The reporting is really telling you what you're getting paid because they're collecting the money. So you need to know uh, what should be coming in for these providers and the supporting detail to it. This is going to put it all in one location. If you remember that picture earlier with all the different pads, if you're using multiples, then I've got to go to each one, right? Making my audit process a little bit more difficult, right? Because I've got to check this one. I've got to check this one. What should be getting paid on what day? Um, and then making sure that that reconciles with everything else. Um, with Chally, you're going to get a central location. You'll get a central point. And then you can really look at where are your dollars best being spent? You might find out that I thought Grubhub was the way to go, but we're really finding out that this one is the growth vehicle or the one um, that is doing the best. And they do uh, fewer fees, uh, fewer service charges and stuff like that. So you're able to make a little bit more money. So you may want to make an adjustment. So it at least gives you the ability to look at the third party piece in a holistic measure so that you can really make the best decisions for your business. Okay, so some key takeaways from today that I hope you guys have 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 um, noticed. So using your point of sale to integrate all of your incoming orders makes life easier and it cuts down on the total number of points of failure, right? We wanna make sure that it's smooth, that it's easy and the order's coming in, being created and it's out the door in a shorter period of time with as few touches as possible. Um, with the integration through Squirrel, you get to manage multiple third-party deliveries from a single location, which makes it really nice. Um, and in that same scenario, you can have certain items that are only available on certain platforms um, if you find that one works better for you than the other. Um, we are aware that there is not a one-size-fits-all approach, and we want to help you with where you're at, uh, whether that is a single third-party delivery, whether that is getting to getting an online presence and then moving to a third-party delivery, um, we're here to help, and we're building you the tools to make it easy for you to manage it, but continue managing your restaurant like normal without all the extra steps. Um, and then the other part is upgrading to Squirrel version 11.7 is going to get you the best overall interface, right? As time goes on, tools get enhanced, things get integrated directly into the browser, um, and 11.7 would be the direction we'd really want you to go so you can have that easy management experience right there in the back end Squirrel browser. So the question becomes, are you guys ready to upgrade? Um, and as a technical person, um, I can tell you that some of the new features that are out there um, in our new versions from 10 to 11, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, we've got 11, 8, and 11, 9 coming down the road. Um, upgrading is definitely something you guys should be looking at doing. There's a lot of new stuff out there, um, and even the new items that we've talked about today through for third-party um, delivery. 
So some things to think about when you're looking at upgrading, right? We've got some pieces going on. Free on-site installation of a new host PC with Squirrel 11. Um, that's awesome. We can get you new installed. We can get your SQL upgraded, and it's all right there and part of the package. Uh, free setup of new contactless payment devices. If you're not EMV um, right now, we need to get you there. There are tethered options. There are mobile options. There are cellular options. We can meet you guys where you're at, whether you want to be able to use it in-house, in the parking lot, or off-premise for catering and different things like that. Um, free setup of online order. That's awesome. Um, not having to deal with another company um, that's having to do it, that doesn't understand it, we're going to help you with that and waive those fees. Um, and then up to 35% discount on no POS terminals and hardware. Um, depending on where you are, what you've got, which terminal versions you're running, we have an incredible new suite of terminals. Some are widescreen, some are big screen. They're pretty amazing. Um, I think everybody would enjoy seeing the new pieces. Um, and if there are questions, and I know that as I get ready to hand this back to Megan, um, if there are questions, of course, you can reach out to your sales managers. You can reach out to uh, your business partners, anybody that's out there that you normally work with, um, any salesperson that you've worked with. If you have trouble with that, you can always reach out to customer success. Megan would be a good contact, um, and those groups can help steer you directly where you need to be to kind of get you moving. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Patrick, uh, for that detailed overview of the features and options that are available to our Squirrel customers. Um, it actually looks like we do have a few questions that have come in here. Um, so I'm going to let my co-host Cyrus take over. Go ahead, Cyrus. Okay, great. Thank thanks, Megan. Uh, yes, we've got some really good questions. Um, so one of the first questions we have here, uh, Patrick, earlier you uh, described how there's a couple different paths to integrating with third-party delivery services. One path is through the online ordering platform, through like an Xdyn um, or a Tacit, and the other was through Chally with that direct point-of-sale integration. Um, we talked a lot. You had talked about the uh, ability to synchronize the the menu, um, handle out-of-stock items through the Chally interface. Uh, can you do that if you integrate through an online ordering platform? Uh, such as Xdyne, can you still also synchronize your menu? Can you also notify of any out-of-stock items if you go down that online ordering uh, path? Yeah, and that's all built into the interfaces. It's kind of a key piece. So with both Megan and Xdyne, if I'm going to take something out of stock or what that, that'll push back through our API gateway and it will update those pieces for you. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. So another question here is um, uh, just about the tablets. Um, if they use the Chali interface, do they still need to respond to orders as they come in um, uh, on, on the tablet uh, when the orders come in? Typically, no. Um, if we're integrated, um, those orders are coming directly into the system. Um, yes, they're still hitting the tablet, but they're coming directly into the system. It's not something that you typically have to worry about. Some people early on are check and balancing it. Um, I've got this order, is this one here? Um, we're not seeing issues in that in that realm. Once that order is um, kind of standardized or normalized, it's pushing directly into the system um, and is working without issue. So it's still there, you can still do that, but most people don't need to. They use it for the two issues that we talked about. Um, either I've got an issue that I have to be able to get some type of a message to the customer or we are swamped and I've got to pause orders. I cannot take any more until my kitchen can get caught up. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. Um, so we, we have some, so we have a few questions about what, uh, so some different services that are supported. For example, there's a question about whether or not we support uh, Talk, which is a, an online ordering um, uh, platform. Um, and uh, at, I'll take that question. Uh, Patrick showed earlier uh, a number of different services that are supported through our third-party uh, delivery service like Chowley and some of the online ordering platforms. If you don't see a online ordering platform that's on there, uh, you know, please reach out to Squirrel. We, we have a ton of experience working with a lot of other different online ordering platforms and you know, we'll either work with our online ordering platform or partner or Chowley to see if we can add that. If not, we can all, we've, we also have ways to work with our uh, professional services team to, to, uh, to 
to develop an interface. So, so definitely reach out to us um, um, if you have a specific requirement. Um, you know, as Patrick mentioned earlier, we, what we're trying to do here with our Chowley direct point of sale interface and with our online order platforms is to provide the most uh, choice as, as possible. So, um, you know, please reach out to us if you've got questions uh, about supporting a particular service. We've got another question um, about uh, the fees. Um, how much would it cost to uh, to use some of these third-party integrated services like a Chowley or these online ordering platforms? And so, I mean, the short answer to that is that it, it, it does depend. Um, we work with a number of different online uh, platforms. If you go through an online ordering platform, uh, it, you know they typically charge a um, a uh, subscription uh, uh, based monthly fee on a per site or per location basis and there may be some additional transaction fees um, on top of that uh, it, again it depends on which online or in platform um, if you go through uh, a Chowley uh, to do that direct point-of-sale integration um, that particular interface uh, we're uh, just charging a, a monthly uh, subscription uh, fee um, starting at $75 uh, per month for the uh, first location uh, per platform um, there are no additional you know transaction fees on top of that um, so the only fees you would have to pay um, on top of the uh, on top of the, um, the that monthly per location uh, per platform fee would be um, your, the fees that you would pay to the third-party delivery um, uh, services. Um, so that the pricing that I mentioned there again, that's just that was the U.S. pricing um, that was just for the um, the, the Chow integration. Please reach out to us if you've got a, um, a, a specific requirement for you know different services, and then we can we can help put together a proposal for you on that. Okay, just looking through the questions here. So Patrick, we've got one question here um, where they currently work uh, through Eckstein and they're looking to integrate with, um, oh, they're currently with Skip and they want to integrate uh, and they would like to add DoorDash and they're wondering if they should do this in two integrations or is it best to wait until they're both uh, both live. You know that that always comes down to preference. Um, if you're comfortable with the operation and bringing in essentially twice as many potential online orders in a given window, you can go with both. Um, my suggestion is usually kind of wade into the waters a little bit. Go ahead and do your first one and then add on to it after that. Um, that doesn't have to be a long period of time. That could be you know a, a week. Right, we're doing it. We're in the swing of it. We've got everything kind of smoothed out operationally the way we want. Now we're going to add the other one and increase the volume. Um, that would be my suggestion, but ultimately it's your call for what's best for you. But I tend to like a bit of a phased approach, even if that phased window is pretty small. Okay. Okay, and then um, another question is, um, you know, with uh, is is there a, a limit to the number of orders that can be entered into the system uh, from uh, from say Chowley or um, uh, an online ordering platform? Not currently, right? They're going to make their money off of volume, so they want to pump as many through as possible, and that's why they have that pause feature um, if it just gets to be overwhelming. And that's we're working with them to try to set up some type of a schedule or at least ability where I can say only allow so many orders in this particular window and if they still want to just push them to the next window um, so that we can take that. But as of right now, for most of them, it's, you know, when they open the gates, it could be a trickle, it could be a flood. Um, so we just want to make sure that we go into it with our eyes open, what potentially to expect, because, you know, we are seeing a big uptick um, on online, online orders and people looking for delivery. Um, as things open, of course, we're seeing a good number of people get in, but, you know, we've got to be able to meet customers where they're at. Some people are going to want the standard experience. I want to come in. I want to face. I want to talk. Um, other people, nope, I don't want to see it. I don't want to talk to you. I want to place my order, bring it to the door, and drop it off. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're we're providing that um, that channel for however the customers want to get to us. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. And 
I think we've got one time for one last question here. Um, and the question is, um, we've got a couple of questions about, uh, again, services that are supported through Chali. For example, is Chali going to take on Skip the Dishes? Um, and we have some other questions about some other services um, you know, outside of the US. Um, the short answer is you know, with Skip the Dishes, uh, you know, Chali is is looking at uh, supporting Skip. They don't support it now. It's something that they are looking at um, adding into the future. If you need, if that's a, Skip is a requirement right now, we do have uh, partners such as um, um, Eigen, Eckstein, and Tacit and their Megan platform that support uh, Skip. Uh, so uh, we can get you there. But you know, Chali, as we had mentioned earlier, is con continually adding. Um, services all the time. Um, so definitely reach out to us to get the, the latest update on that if you want to go down that route. If not, you know, we can also get you um, with some of our online ordering platforms and get you um, integrated with uh, some of those services like Skip. So with that, I think that's all the time we have for, uh, for questions. I'm going to hand it back to uh, Megan to wrap things up for us. Okay, great. Thank you, Cyrus. Um, thank you to our attendees for submitting those questions. And thank you, Patrick and Cyrus, again, for providing such detailed answers there. Um, as Patrick mentioned, uh, sorry, as Cyrus mentioned, that's all the time that we have here today. But just to wrap things up here, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we will be following up with a short post webinar survey. Your feedback on today's presentation would be greatly appreciated. We will also be following up with an email to view the recordings and slides in the next day or so. And please stay tuned for an invitation to our next monthly webinar in the next few weeks. We will be conducting these on the first Thursday of every month. Uh, on that note, if you would like to see upcoming webinars as well as past recordings, please visit our website at squirrelsystems.com. Click blog at the top there on the main menu and then scroll down to click on webinars. And finally, if you are interested in upgrading today to take advantage of these uh, features and capabilities, please reach out to your sales manager. If you're unsure of who that is or have any other questions, uh, please feel, re uh, feel free to reach out to our customer success team at customersuccess at squirrelsystems.com. We will also post a link in the chat if you would like to make an appointment with a customer success representative today. Okay, thank you everyone for your attendance and participation today and have a great rest of your day.